Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever time zone it is for you. Welcome to the Wix online meeting number 14. Uh, this feels like the first meeting of the new year. I know we've already had a couple meetings, but they were all triage related. For me, it feels like, hey, the new year has finally started. Granted, we're only about a weekend, so I don't know what that says, but welcome. Um, as just a reminder, like always, these meetings are recorded for those people that are unable to attend in person. So uh, we'll go ahead and get it right into the agenda. This is a status meeting. So we get to cover all kinds of new stuff. One of the things that I'm most excited to talk about are this new concept of Wix improvement proposals. Um, we'll talk about that in a minute, but I think this is going to make life much more uh, structured for the Wix tool set now and in the future. We're going to do things a little differently in the new year. Uh, triage will now be in the middle instead of at the end of the uh, discussion, and that'll make sense as we discuss the, the um, Wix improvement pro proposals and all that kind of stuff. Uh, after that, we'll continue with our agenda of the discussions of what is 3.9 versus uh, v4 and that kind of stuff. And then, as always, we'll close with questions and comments and that kind of stuff. So as always, if you have things you want to discuss, um, feel free to start dropping them in the uh, discussion box over on the side while we continue on. Uh, here we go. Introducing the Wix improvement proposals. Uh, these are affectionately called WIPs. Um, Bob and I have been talking about this concept for a long time, of, especially for some of the old stuff where the question comes back and it's like, wow, why did we do X or what did we do Y? And Bob's followed the Python community pretty closely for a long time. And he mentioned PEPs, turned these on to me a long time ago, and he was like, here, this is how Python handles their change tracking. Always kind of like, well, how could we do this for Wix? And I think we finally have come around this year, at the end of the year, kind of figure out the process that we can build a lightweight documentation process, something you use when just sending an email to Wix devs is um, not enough, where you, know, you want to get a discussion going, and maybe you have a discussion in Wix devs, which is fine, but then you need to, something that captures it, because going back and finding that discussion is going to be very, very challenging for anybody in the future. So we want to get something where we can document features, and maybe more rarely, but if we want to process changes in the Wix tool set um, as, we, you know, as we go forward. Uh, and really, the, the goals of the WIPs is more, is one, to organize the discussion uh, locally, and maybe in Wix devs, something where you can point at a document that people can catch up to later rather than trying to keep up on the thread. Um, but m even more important for the future, when people come back later and go, oh, why did we do X or Y or Z? There have been a number of times recently where I wish we had a set of whips that described parts of burn. And who knows, maybe I'll try one day to go back and retroactively add <laughs> whips for burn, because there's some design decisions in there that would be nice to do. So a lot of this is for retroactive stuff, like why did we do a feature? You know, What was the motivation for it? Of course, the technical details for it. and then. Often more important than anything else is to record the design trade-offs um, and, and you know why did we do X? And so that later on when we come along, we can go back and say, oh, that feature was done for that reason, okay. And oh, they actually considered these different ways and oh, look, they didn't think understand that in the future X would happen. Therefore, the design made sense back at that time, but maybe the current has changed, things like that. We'll be able to make those kinds of, uh, at least hopefully learn those kind of things about. So. That's what a WIP is. Where they're at is on the Wix website here. So if you go to the Wix website, there's a new section called Development. And on the Development, there's a link over on the side. On the Development, there's a side over to the Wix Improvement Proposals. These are the current WIPs that are open and out. All right. I'm going to take a look at WIP 0, which is uh, what Bob calls the meta WIP, the WIP about WIPs. Um, and this is basically something that you can come back and read about any time when you're thinking, you know what, I want to create an uh, improvement proposal to the Wix tool set. Uh, how would I go about doing that? This is kind of, this is where it's discussed. So um, if you have, it's broken down here. Have an idea, break it down, start writing about it, talk about it on the Wix tool set, things like that. One of the things we want to, I want to call out is that there's a tie between a feature request and a WIP. The WIP will have a number that ties to the same number that will be in the issue tracker in the Wix tool set. That way that we can use the issue tracker to move and define what release a WIP goes into, and then the WIP can just be about the content and things like that. So we don't have to keep coming back to the WIP and saying it was in this version or uh, it did that. The, we'll do our standard triage and all that kind of process on the issue tracker. 
And that's why I want to introduce the whips before we do triage today, because we actually have a number of whips to cover <laughs> during triage. Um, and then you go about writing this document and stuff like that. This is not meant to be, you know, a huge writing a book or anything like that. It's, you know, get your ideas down just so that someone could come around later and go, oh, that's why X, Y, or Z was done. And then do try to keep it up to date um, for uh, the future, right? So when people suggest things or stuff like that, as you're thinking about, you know, trade-offs, things like that, capture them in the Wix as you're doing that. The way you submit this, this is on the Wix website, which means that the document is checked into Git, so you can get into the Wix web. Uh, this page has information about how to create it down here a little bit further, and uh, you'll be able to go in and say, all right, cool, this is where my whips are. I can add one, write them, all that kind of stuff. Check it in, standard pull request. So it's just like code in the end for us. That's basically what the whips will be. Um, we don't want whips for every single tiny little bug fix. It's really, if you get something that can't be summed up or it's going to get lots of discussion or is bigger, it's like, yeah, you know, I want to get some feedback. It's feature level stuff, not probably bug fixes. Although if a bug fix gets complicated or big enough, arguably turning into a feature, maybe there's a reason to have a whip. Although we can write them for as many things as we want. All right, so the goal again is that this is a fairly lightweight process to capture our um, our design decisions as we're making them rather than keeping it purely like oh, quite often at this point in my head or in maybe in Bob's head or someone else's is like, oh yeah, right. Um, well, and, and you know, you mentioned burn and that's really the best example. Yeah. Um, because it's, Burn is something entirely outside of, of MSI for the most part. So there are more decisions that happen there. And I remember you being on vacation and me having to sit there going, what the hell was that? With, with, without enough, uh, uh, especially the trade-offs, it's like, why didn't, why didn't he do it that way? Being able to address that is, is hugely valuable. Um, and and being able to capture that later of going, why wasn't this done? Like, in that case, it would have been awesome if Bob could have gone yeah. into the consideration section of the whip and say, why didn't we do this? And someone along, maybe me or someone else, comes along later and goes and provides the answer to that. Um, either way, getting it captured in a document that is, because emails are hard to capture, uh, or sorry, hard to find later for those kind of things. It's basically trying to capture the summary of the decisions. In it. Yep. And all, all this is covered in the WIP0. So go ahead and read through WIP0. Um, also, at this point, if you think WIP0 doesn't make sense or could be clearer or needs more detail, or maybe less detail, I suppose that's always possible, check the file out, submit a pull request, and say, here, I have improved this. We're happy to take those. That goes true for all WIPs, including those of you that are better with commas and things like that. Feel free to go through all WIPs that I've written, because I've probably comma spliced everything to heck. Well, they so, caught most of your commas, but okay. <laughs> yeah, Bob's been through most of them. So uh, that's what whips are. If people have specific questions right now, we can start you know, queuing them up for discussion later. Um, but I, I hope it's generally pretty straightforward. It's always fun talking to a silent audience. It's no feedback. But there we go. So now that we kind of understand where whips are and things like that, um, I look forward to people coming up with ideas and features that are uh, – large enough to need a whip, because that'll be exciting. I look forward to other people going, oh, I have this great idea. I should write a document or something like that. <laughs> that will be very, very cool. Well, and the idea, too, you know, the whole whip process includes, you know, it includes discussions on, on Wix devs. It includes a, an issue, uh, sorry, a feature request and issue tracker. So it goes through triage. It goes through this meeting. So it's, it's really, it's just about, different levels of communication, and then I think the WIP is designed to be the, the you know, uh, well, I don't want to say it, you know, stone tablet, but it's it's something that you go, okay, well, this one you file away in a special place so you know you can always go back to it, as opposed to emails and issues that you, you know, you can search all these things, but, you know, search isn't perfect. No, and, and whips aren't don't have to be big. They could be literally one page. I mean, it's just enough to capture any technical decision and stuff. Jacob Hoover's bringing up the point that he's been working on this self um, self updating bundles. I think anything that made a change to the API or has enough that you're like, well, I made some changes back and forth. Getting a whip to document that is has 
would have value. Um, even retroactively going and adding WIP could have value, although we're not going to hold up your feature and saying you really should go write a WIP, Jacob. Just so to think about, if you thought it'd be helpful for people in the future, it would probably be worth it. Um, we're hoping this kind of becomes more of a way that we can discuss features uh, in more structured ways since we've been kind of, I don't know, all over the place trying to find the right way to do that. All right. So we will continue here. Oh, one thing I want to point out. Um, you can write the WIP pretty much at any point in time. I think Bob actually added a thing to the documentation or something. It's like, you could write your entire feature and everything and then write the WIP, write the WIP without writing a line of code. We don't want to have a whole lot of structure about this. The one thing is that the hope is that these Wix improvement proposals get you feedback early enough in the process that you'll know that if you write code, you'll have higher confidence that it will be accepted versus going and writing your feature, changing the way you know everything in the Wix tool set works because it's going to be so much better, and then writing the WIP and then having people kind of look at it and go, whoa, that changes everything. We're not prepared to take that kind of change and losing all the time you're on that code. This can save you a lot of that. So we're hoping it gets a lot more uh, structure in places. For example, I've written a lot of code ahead of a couple whips we're going to talk about today, guessing that they'll be taken. But you know, you can do, they could always be denied, and then I could go back and throw away all that code. But we'll talk about that in triage. All right. So far, people are generally saying this looks like a generally good idea. So we'll go ahead and move on to triage. Um, and it looks like I've lost my mouse cursor on the website. No, it's back. All right. So this point, we're going to do triage. We're doing triage in the middle. Yeah, yeah, I have lost my mouse cursor. All right, just a moment. I'm going to have to close IE and start again. Hopefully you see a black screen now as I get this to be sized right. Yes? Good. This is one of the things that... All right, let's go get this presenting again, and hopefully it won't lose my mouse cursor this time. All right. So we're back to triage. This is triage like we've always done it, except you'll notice that we only have nine issues. That is not a typo. That is not a mistake. We actually did get through 790-some bugs or something like that over the last year. Thank you to those of you that participated in all those extra triage meetings. We got through our backlog, and we're now down to basically the set of things that are real. So like always, triage, Bob, you ready? I am ready. All right. Um, should we start at the bottom or the top? We've always started at the top because of the refresh issues, but maybe we can start at the bottom. No, we'll just start at the top because we always have. There we go. Provide a zip of installers for corporate users that have XE downloads blocked. What? Yeah, this this came from uh, the CodePlex site, as I recall. Oh. This was the two-star review that was a feature request. I see. Oh, right. <laughs> I've never found. I've never found. I mean, I've I've seen this before, where you can't download XEs on you know extreme lockdown scenarios, but like extreme lockdown to the point where they couldn't even install it anyway because they don't have admin privileges. And I've never seen a simple zip being a workaround. It's not like they went, oh, oh we're fooled. Your zip file broke down all of our defenses. I don't want to spend more this space tracking this. Yeah, this is like the, the, this will get you the this won't the Jacob brings up you know other alternatives like there's even a binary zip which they could get that too, but um, you won't get the vote of integration which is what you need the MSI for or the the exe in this case the burn bundle. I don't uh, I don't want to bulk up everything. Interesting. Uh, I mean, I guess in the end, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of like, wow. I mean, at some point, we're gonna, you know, oh, can you v64 encode it because they don't let us get the eighth bit? 
but I think J Jacob's got the right point. If someone has to have privileges to be able to download the file, which you can do from, you know, a phone, um, <laughs> and, then, and then run layout. Mm -hmm. Or USB key. Well, yeah, then you get into question, questions of lockdown again. I suppose. I found out the hard way a lot of uh, a lot of sites do enjoy locking down USB. I don't want to provide yet another download. I mean, we already have. I'm worried about space and like size and all that kind of stuff. <sighs> well, this. I mean, to be honest, if we do this at all, it it. I would suggest it be done only for RTMs. Oh, I suppose we could do that. But then we're never testing it, but yeah, chances it's wrong. Well, and then at that point, it's a zip of a single... That's true. Taxi with, an, ...with an attached container. Which means so, we could retroactively, by hand, upload it. Yeah. <sighs> I, I'm not thrilled about this, because I don't, I don't think this solves... As, as we're getting data from the IM window here, there's a lot of different variants of, of lockdown and whatnot. I'm, I mean, if we do this, I don't think we've heard the end of the lockdown story, but yeah, it, it would not take long to do if we wanted to. If we chose to do it, it would not take long to do. I'll put it that way. I guess we only did this for RTM builds. That would save most of our, or address most of the concerns for the, the space problem. Right, right. Yeah, I, I don't want to get into trying to make this work. I don't even think we should automate it, to be honest. We could, but. Yeah, what if we don't? What if we don't automate it? Yeah, it's just, it's an RTM thing. Right. I agree with I agree with you, Jacob. I don't think this is something. I I think at a certain point, if your corporation says that you shouldn't be downloading XEs, then they're probably not going to be real happy with you know use of random open source. Well, like downloading a zip so you can then launch the XEs. Yeah. Interesting. Um. I do not know what to do with this. Well, I guess we could do it retroactively. Um, always I, retroactively. I'm, I'm thinking it. we can do this for 3.8. Yeah. And if we remember, we can do it for 3.9. And if we forget and someone reminds us, we can do it again. Because it's not a lot of work. I, I mean, at best, I'm plus zero on this kind of a change. I'm not really opposed. I'm just kind of like, this is yeah. a mess to me. Well, I, I guess the question is, do we do this for three... I guess we could just go do it, see what happens. Actually, you know, that's not a bad idea. What? Okay, I, I will take the bug, I will go upload a zip, and if it doesn't get, you know, I'll try to come up with a good name, and if it doesn't get, like, you know, 1% of the total downloads, yeah, you can just see if anybody guides. Then if no one wants it in 3.8, no one's going to want it in 3.9, and we'll stop doing it. Yeah, and Blair's right. Like, I, this is really strange. I feel like, like I'm the person that's most likely to do it, but I, I, I just don't. Yeah, let's see what happens with it. Yeah, I'll, I'll, 
because I'll we can do it retroactive. I don't want to put it in the process. I don't want to do it anyway. Because we can do it retroactively. Yeah. Let's yeah. Let's go do it retro and see what happens. Yep. Can't believe that that's going to solve this guy's thing. I don't know what to do with this bug though. You want to put it in three eight? Yeah, I'll, I put in three eight. Assign it to me. Okay. I'll go do it today. Three eight will go away soon. So. That's right. All right. Bundle begins where bundle where number begins with zero leaves out the zero. They want one two zero three. Yeah, this is. Yes, that's because we. Yeah, it's an insignificant zero, and burn has a version type, so it won't keep it. Whereas MSI does, because it's just a property, so it's just a string. I don't. But it's still, it's a string with rules. It's a version number. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I'm, I'm. So one point two point zero three. Yeah, oh God. <laughs> I agree with John. <laughs> Don't do it. Yeah, it's it's. Yeah, no, no. And this is probably. Uh, yeah, yeah, they're doing this just just to get major upgrades working. Which. Sorry, you're using the Windows installer. You get to play by their rules. We didn't. Yeah. They're stupid. We didn't make them. But. I'm not apologizing for them. No, I'm not. And. Doing things, messing with the no. It's just this is way too much. Work. I mean, t this is just gonna be a pain, and it doesn't. No, it's not a good idea. No, I I, I much prefer the fact that Burn normalizes the version numbers. I, I much prefer the fact that Burn has a version type, which is why it normalizes the version numbers. So you can actually right. do math on these things correctly. Yeah. Oh, I guess that would still work. I think this. Um, no, right. Isn't 1.2.1 1. or oh, 0, 0.3 works? Right. Yes, but 0, 0.1.2 does not. Although 0. 0.12, right? No, I guess point. Oh. Yeah, no, none of those work. Anyway, this is why we have a version. <laughs> no. Is there a better solution for this bug reporter? A better solution. Uh, a better solution. Actually, you know what? They don't need to do this in a bundle. Right. They can just but do one point two point oh point three. That will get Burn will handle it just fine. Oh, that's true. I wonder they won't match, which is a downside. No, so, it'll actually get him what he wants. No, I agree. I agree. So, well, so no. But burn, on the package, though, burn burn will do that. We'll treat that as a minor upgrade. No. Oh, on the MSI, sure. I mean, he has he can do whatever he wants with the MSI. Right. On the bundle, and that's what I'm saying. Do the, the right thing. The, but they'll be different is, is the only thing I'm saying. I think it's still but fine. You'll never see it. You'll never see the MSI version, which means he'll actually get a better solution. He'll get the version number he always wanted instead of hacking his version number to make it fit in some weird MSI behaviors. Well, it, it's not a foregone conclusion that he won't see the MSI version because some people love to keep them. Well, you know, there's a solution to that, too. So. Yeah, I know. So, um, this isn't a bug. This is this is the design. I don't think we want to change Burn to do this. So, not. Or, or let's um, add the comment that he can actually put the full four versions for bundle, and he's good to go. Yep. Then we're um, good to go. All right. Um, yeah, it actually will work correctly. Um, let's jump down here to this bug before we start doing some of these features. Um, can't build installer for Hindi. Um, yeah, yeah, MSI doesn't support. Yeah, the code page for MSI doesn't support that. Yeah, I, I we did this in we did this in triage last week. Um, anyway, it, it's if there's a problem, a bug report's kind of a bit slow to uh, send this information back and forth. I, 
So if it doesn't work with UTF-8, I have no idea what's wrong. So I'm um, kind of back to my original suggestion that you need to send mail to Wix users and maybe you talk to someone who's done this before. Yep. Yes. Uh, okay. No, that's good to know, Blair. I, I've, like I said, I, I've done. Yeah. <laughs> I've mostly done efigs PRJ. That's. Yeah. So let, let's. I agree. What I'm doing wrong. As soon as we see what am I doing wrong, almost always this is. Right. Right. When you have a discussion about it, it's not a bug report. It's a discussion. So let's go take the discussion with users, and if we find that, for example, the code that is verifying the code pages is wrong in the Wix tool set, then we'll open a bug. But this isn't this isn't right here. All right. Um, I'm we're gonna leave this four two four three, I think, because we sent Heath off to go get some inf more information. I think he's still on holiday, so we'll wait for him to get back. Yeah, I think he's back and and kind of brain addled from being on vacation. Yeah, well, that's fine. Whenever he gets back, we'll ask about this bug. This this is getting more interesting as more and more people, more and more I think about it, the more and more I'm like, well, maybe we don't do signing. Which Anyway, that's what that is all about, which is quite exciting to think about what that means for the simplifications in there. Um, so at our work at Fire Giant, we've been doing a number of things, and I'm trying to figure out the best way to go through these improvements that we proposed. Um, I think we'll start here. I think this one will make the most sense first. Yes, you wouldn't want to start at the end or the beginning. Well, it's... <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm just... Well, <laughs> at some point we're probably going to have to triage with bugs in order because these were opened in an order that almost made sense. Yeah. Um, anyway, and these are an example of whips of something that I was thinking about doing that I wrote later, and then I was like, oh, I should probably do this. So uh, the there is a whip for this. Um, Can you bring that up? Uh, yes. Uh, last time I oh I should I needed to add a comment. I forgot to do that before triage. Oh uh, yeah, a link there would be. I know it's something I've been thinking. Maybe we can add automatically, or so, I haven't figured out what to do there. Um, layering improvements. So again, okay, see, look, a nice small whip. Not not too much here. Um, the proposal here is to create a couple new DLLs, and actually, if you've looked, you've, you've seen some of these kind of coming out, to break Wix DLL, which is this gigantic thing that is that has essentially three purposes built into it, um, and break it down into the separate purposes. So one would be a data DLL, which would pull all of the stuff necessary to read and, and um, talk about the file formats that are output from the Wix tool set um, in a separate DLL. The next DLL would be the interfaces necessary to create um, Wix toolset extensions. And then the next layer is the stuff that we typically think of Wix DLL being for, which is the compiler, the linker, the binder, all the things that do the processes, the things that do work. I don't know what else to call it, but it's basically a heavy lifting. And then these all stack on top of each other where the data, the Wix extensibility uses the data, but the data can be used by itself, and the Wix DLL needs both the extensibility and the data because extensibility is this really thin um, DLL that has only the interfaces necessary to do extensibility, which also means that if you're writing an extension, you only need to use the extensibility and the data DLL. More importantly, you should only be using those and so it gets cleaner depending on what kind of problem you're trying to solve. Are you writing a Wix extension? If so, you just take a dependency on Wix toolset extensibility. You'll have access to the Wix data, because often that's useful. And you don't have to worry about this gigantic surface area that comes in Wix DLL. If you just want to read a uh, Wix PDB, for example, which is actually a really cool thing to do when you start doing that, you can just look at uh, pulling Wix toolset data DLL and things like that. Internally, to the Wix DLL, I'm, as I was working my way through these things, I found lots of places where we were creating these cross dependencies between objects that really probably never should have been tied together. So the other thing that this layering will do, which is what layering usually is intended to do, is it will prevent incorrect hooks between layers that should not be tied together, creating really strange code paths. And so I've been snipping those. I've been going through and separating all this stuff. In the result, it's been cleaning up. Wix deal, it's been cleaning up everything. Everything's been getting a lot cleaner. Um, so anyway, that's what this is about. It will make life much cooler. Um, in the end, if you want to take a dependency on Wix DLL, which I don't know that many people do, to, 
if you want to take it depending on which DLL to like get to the compiler, which I don't know that many people do, it means you have to add references to these other two DLLs. That's the difference. Um, if you write an extension, you create a, a reference to these other two DLLs, to the extensibility in the data DLL, um, things like that. That's kind of the other changes. But man, does it clean everything up. So anyway, that's that proposal. Sounds good to me. <laughs> yeah, well, it makes no, it I mean, much I, better. I, I like the well, I like that you broke it up into a few things along layers that make sense internally and externally. Um, a lot of times, the breakdown is obviously useful internally, but not so much externally. Yeah. Yeah, no, this is this goes both ways. Honestly, it'll make the Wix DLL not be this wall of public APIs in the end. It'll, it, it'll, it'll become much cleaner uh, when you're trying to approach the DLLs, which I yeah. hope will make them easier for people to use them, and thus we can get more usage, Pretense, particularly in the extensibility space. Um, so anyway, that's what that one is. Um, so I'm hoping Triage will consider opening that into V4, and if so, then we'll finish our work in Firejine on it. Cool. John's given an upvote. I was going to say. Kind of, John's kind of got the hang of this, of the whole putting his two cents in, so we keep going. Um, well, the rest of triage agrees. All right. It's kind of weird when I'm making the proposal, it feels kind of Right. Weird. Or when I'm representing the proposal, it's like, oh, no, what do I say? Um, I'm, I'm not my most powerful, so I'm feeling fine. Yeah. <laughs> Um, simple standard file structure. So this is actually a fallout from the layering feature, um, and I, I'm not comparing it with the whip right now. And I, I need to find, I need to add links to them as soon as I do that. But um, essentially, one of the things you find as you start bringing on Wix data DLL is that it had all these weird ties into the way the binder was working inside. Or when you try to pull like, like libraries and uh, PDBs, they have all these weird ties into things that were for the binder, and it create. This is one of those examples of all this messy stuff tied together. And so you couldn't take a dependency just on Wix toolset data DLL. You'd have to pull in all this other stuff the binder needed, like Winterop and you know our native DLL and all this other kind of nasty stuff. So the proposal here is to create a simple standard file structure for all of the outputs that are Wix. So like Wix OBJ, Wix out, Wix PDB, stuff like that. Honestly, this makes me Wix toolset data DLL easier to write. Um, and rather than using this cab thing and then putting a thing, it, it's a very simple, just put all the files in here, in, in the, um, inside the file, just lay them out in disk. The whip has a layout of the bytes and stuff like that. Um, the other win that this gets us is that we get random access. It, it will support random access better, because it turns out as I was walking through the binder and stuff, uh, the way that like binary Wix are used today, they extract all the files um, and then you pull, then the binder pulls only the files it needs. And it looks like, in general, the binder uses a third of the files of any uh, bind bound Wixlib. When you think about custom actions having x86, x64 in the support DLLs, it only uses like one or two of the DLLs every time, which means we're extracting the files, extra files that we don't need to during the build. With this having random access, we would only access the files that we needed, which should help improve perf. In general, it's a faster thing, the faster way to access. The, the downside of the current proposal, and we could change this in the WIP if people want to, is it doesn't compress. So they'll be a little bigger, but the embeddeds don't usually have lots of files in them. They're just, you know, like typically less than five files in them. So um, this will help make Wix toolset.dll get down. Uh, Wix two set DLL data DLL not have dependencies on stuff that went in the binder. This makes that simpler. So that's what this is. Without this, the Wix tool set data DLL gets harder to do as a complete standalone thing. So um, that's what this is about. And the, the speed. The only, the, go ahead. And, and the speed improvement looks like it's going to be pretty nice, actually. The only my my only feedback, and I left this in the pull request, is that now all the all of the outputs are some are essentially binary files. Whereas before, unless you use a 
like, for example, a binary which lib. Unless you explicitly file the files in. That's true. You're right. Sometimes, that's actually, true. though, but not not always. That's the thing that it's like yeah. a, a Wix lib could essentially accidentally become a binary Wix lib based on what was in it. Right. So for debugging purposes, it was nice to be able to open some of those files before. If if yeah. that's an important scenario for us to maintain, we should write a tool that gets us back to there. Because honestly, um, I'm going. Oh, we have on our docket to do some perf. And it may behoove us to move to a binary format, serialization format, for that stuff that is XML today anyway. Right, um, right, right. And so you'll lose that anyway. And this just ends up being even easier to deal with. My assumption is that the, that the data DLL can read and write the formats and get That's immediate right. stuff out. That's right. So, and honestly, the API is the way you should be going through these things. I don't. I don't want yeah, people to yeah, say, hey, absolutely. let me reverse engineer the file format and do that. Right, 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 right. Yeah, no, I, I'm, the API is there. I've done a lot of work over the past few years in PDBs and whatnot, and the existing API is, is fine um, to, you know, to get to the bits that I want. If I need to get to the, the lower level and sometimes, you know, like the actual today XML representation, I can do that even with a binary file. Um, it's not like this is a magic or encrypted format or anything. So. No. In fact, one of the interesting things about the way it's laid out, if you do Notepad and you go to the end, you'll find the XML blob today. So it's actually easy to find. And again, yeah. if this and this is an important feature, we can add something. I have an idea that we could add to the structure format to make it easy to maintain that. So this is something, but I am assume you've, uh, this whip is, yeah, being, is in or whatever. This is the kind of thing, for example, that we should catch in the considerations of this thing. Yeah. Of this of this whip and make sure that we get an answer to it. Well, and actually, the, speaking of how whips work, you know, the I left comments on the pull request, that, and anyone can do that. So it's right. a great, you know, yes. the, now, there's a record. We do need to get those pull pull comments of the pull request into the document if they're beyond typos. Well, right. Even if they're Absolutely. typos. Um, all right, so we have 20 minutes left. I don't think we're going to get through all the bugs today or all of the requests. We'll come back and pick these up next week um, just because I want to make sure we get through the rest of um, the meeting. Cool? That works for me if it works for you. Yeah, you submitted them. Yeah, I submitted them. I think we'll be okay for another week. All right, 3.9 versus 4.0. Bob, 3-9, it's all you. Take it away. Oh, all right. So, uh, no. I can't spell stable, by the way. That's painful. No, no, you can't. Um, go ahead. And go you're going to go fix it. Okay. Yeah, right in front of everybody because it will bother me. Uh, <laughs> going back to September when uh, I first talked about the, the 3X uh, release idea, um, the, the, you know, these these are the, the high priority things, and I'm pointing at the slide, and I realize you can't see it. Um, the 3x series rock solid requirements are that, that changes be backward compatible, and that s stability keep very high. Um, basically, so as a consequence of that, the things that we take on in 3x basically are going to be smaller. So bug fixes, yes, absolutely. I mean, really, if you think about it, bug fixes are probably the, the key thing that you get from having an ongoing uh, release cycle. Um, platform support uh, for 3.8, that, of course, was Visual Studio 2013, and we kind of got there. Um, there's a little bit of .NET 4.5.1 in there. Nothing for Windows or MSI this time. Well, a little bit. There was a little change in burn. Um, and, and those things are going to happen. And sometimes they're going to be bigger than the, the typical change. Again, backward compatible and stability very high. Um, but they're the kind of things we just have to do. I don't think people would be too happy if you know we have a Wix 3X release that didn't support the latest version of, say, Visual Studio. Um, based on the traffic to my blog, people have been looking 
you know, we're looking for Wix 3.8 six months before it came out. Um, so uh, also kind of fitting in with the idea of compatibility and stability is small features. Um, and this is where it gets a little bit grainy and everything's in a shade of gray. It's like small features, depending on what you mean by small, absolutely can fit in. You know, they can be additive and they can be isolated. So it you know, doesn't affect the stability of, of the overall platform. Um, other features might be bigger and still be compatible, but have a bigger risk of, of uh, decreasing the stability. And that's where we have to start to, to kind of look at the impact that they're going to have. Now, that said, um, for Wix 3.9, I, I would like to target a release date about six months from now, um, which would be about seven months from Wix 3.8 uh, coming out. In general, because bug fixes are, the, I think, the big feature, um, or the big ticket item, the low hanging fruit, uh, along with platform support. I I, I kind of want to target having a release every six months or so. Um, six months should be enough time to accumulate a number of bug fixes, a number of small features, and provide enough value for someone to take it and and start using it. You know, take the time to retest that Wix v3.9 didn't break their their scenarios uh, compared with Wix v3.8, for example. Um, so that said, six months, not a lot of time. Um, and it's it's going to constrain what, what we can take on. Um, right now, uh, you can go look at the, the bugs that are open currently for v3.9. We have 18 right now. Um, we've already had a number come in. Um, in addition to the things that are open right now, uh, I'm still investigating the, the big change to get Votive onto the new um, managed package framework. That's a big chunk of work and probably will be backward compatible, but will probably decrease the stability of Votive for a while until we shake some bugs out. Um, so I'm conscious of the six month deadline. Um, yeah, so that's that's basically where we're where I'm thinking right now for v3.9. Um, you know, looking further out, if we look at another release six months from then, that would be Wix 3.10 coming out at the you know end of the year again, early 2015, something like that. Um, in April, we're going to have the the build. Well, we're Microsoft has the build conference, and everyone will find out, hopefully, like when the next version of Windows is due out, um, when the next version of Visual Studio is due out, and that will enter into the discussions for, you know, well, is this something we have to do in Wix 3.10, or is this Wix 3.11? Um, but that's months away. Uh, for, th for V3.9, if we want to if we want to release in about six months, we need to look at you know well kind of starting to wrap up all of our feature stuff and figure out which bug fixes we're going to take. Uh, right now there's 18, and everyone every one of them has an owner, which is great. Um, and there are plenty in 3x that could be taken by people if they want to go. Oh, I want to work on this. Bring it absolutely. up and see if it will fit in 3.9. Absolutely. All right, which leads us to 4.0. Um, 4.0 kind of thought about this for a while and said the, the big thing, the goal of 4.0 is to get the Wix tool set to be more modern um, and breaking changes. Um, and I highlight breaking changes for a, a reason. Um, so 4.0 is about modernization simplification. A lot of the Wix tool set code is written in the .NET framework 1.1 days. Um, and our APIs and things that people have to, if they want to use our APIs, have to kind of think in the one one days, which means that uh, it's not necessarily terribly friendly to generics, which means uh, all this newfangled link stuff that people like, uh, 
which is actually an extremely nice way of writing code, is really hard to do with the current Wix API. So a lot of Wix 4 is about modernizing our APIs and our code base so that it'll be well easy for us to maintain and easier for people to work against um, and do that. At the same time, going in and doing the um, simplifications that we've always talked about doing, trying to do more of those, particularly because we can now take breaking changes. So where we've been hamstrung a lot of cases in the 3x line, where we're like, oh, we'd like to make that simpler, but it would break everybody. Now is the time for us to go in and go, no, nah, that'll break everybody. That's okay. That's what 4.0 is about. Let's make the language better. Let's make it the thing that everybody goes, oh, that is so much better to write in. When I start a new project, I'd love to start in 4.0 instead of 3, uh, 3x. Um, because I will get these simple languages. I kind of, Bob and I were talking about this just before the meeting, and I was like, you know, it's kind of like 3.0 brought on extensions and um, the sh ability to generate the short file name. Um, so uh, it's like from 2.0 to 3.0 was some modernization, the extensibility, and some language simplification. So from 3.0 to 4.0 will be similar from some modernizations and breaking changes. That said, um, there's an opportunity for people to go, and I want to bring this feature, and your feature has always been said, we can't take that, we can't take that, we can't take that because of breaking changes. Now is the time to bring it to four because we can now do breaking changes. Ideally, we'll get those breaking changes things in earlier than later because it gives more people us more time to work through the breaking changes and then do things like in Wixcop to help people migrate to write you know the auto migration code and stuff like that. So um, if you have stuff you want to do, 4.0 is wide open. Let's talk about what you want to do and get stuff in there and things like that. That said, we, we got a lot of feedback in the past um, about Wix toolset releases taking way too long to get anywhere um, and things like that. So I'm thinking we, we're looking at timeline maybe six to nine months. It'll a lot depend on what people, you know, come up. People come up with something that's like, oh, this is a really cool feature. We should get that done or whatever. Uh, we could do that. Um, I also think six to nine months isn't as crazy um, with these modern breaking changes because um, at Fire Giant, we're spending a lot of our time, you know, working on making Wix 4.0 better for people. So we actually have some full-time people working on those code changes where quite often what you could get in six, nine months was always volunteer time. We actually will be able to do some big feature work uh, all on the simplification and modernization um, from Fire Giant. So totally open to more discussion. Unlike 3.9, where Bob's a little bit more like, nah, really, we should try to do six months. 4.0, we can discuss it more. But right now, it's kind of like, you know, let's go try to see what six, nine months not. Well, let's go take another two years to release this, like we did with 2.0 versus 3.0 and all the deep overlapping. So um, I think that's kind of the summary of 4, is I think a much nicer API, much nicer code, simpler. Um, in the simplification, I'm finding a lot of perf improvements. So hopefully it'll end up being faster and stuff like that. So um, that's kind of what we're thinking right now for the big releases um, of the Wix toolset rolling forward, which brings us to the last slide, which is always questions, comments. And I need to remove this part because triage is not next. Although we could go back and do triage if there are no questions or comments, we can go pick up a couple more bugs at the end. So someone is... Actually, so yeah, Sean, Sean brings up a good point of the, do all the breaking changes have to be in the first release of 4? And ideally, yeah, we need to get the changes in the 4. There will be a Wix 5, so if there are big things that, you know, will be breaking changes, we can, you know, put them in 5. Um, I mean, there will be a Wix 5, so we'll talk about that when we get farther along and when we want to do that. But, yeah, we really should be thinking about getting breaking changes in soon, now. Like, if you have stuff, let's get talking about it get it moving. Well, and also don't forget, you know, we've talked about Wix 3X as kind of the ongoing release chain for uh, for the 3.0 series. Um, I imagine we're going to have something similar in in V4. Yes, 4 will have a sort of thing, the same sort of thing. It will have a the maintenance runs after it. And it, it could be, I mean, it's been known to happen where we've had a couple breaking changes between 3.0 and 3.5, for example, because we got a couple things wrong in 3.0, I think. Um, so, or it was valuable enough. But 
to be fair, the breaking changes that we've been doing thus far have not been massive breaking changes. They've been mostly along the lines of simplification, so it's just an easier way of doing what you could do before. It's just a lot easier. Um, I think the case where if people have big burn features, um, like that's that's probably a, a more different one discussion to have um, or breaking well, changes. That back, that. That's less a breaking change than a stability concern. Yeah. So anyway. Um, so any other questions? Uh, Jacob's typing a book. Or not, maybe. No, nope, stop. All right. Um, we have five, ten minutes. Should we look at, are there any of these issues easier to look at? Um, Ah uh, yeah, so Jacob still yeah, and Jacob, we should talk uh, about your changes for like self update and where to put it. Like it may be that that disqualifies it from three nine small feature and bumps it into feature three four. So yes, but let's talk about that specific issue and we can go from there. All right, so um, we've got a couple minutes. Let's talk about this one. Um. So this is actually a feature that I've tripped across, or a desire for this feature I've tripped across pretty much any time I've gotten into a large installation system, um, whether inside Microsoft or outside Microsoft, I've seen this. So the concept here, and I can bring up the whip. I don't know if the whip is clear. Oh, no, I've lost the... It keeps losing the cursor. I can't see. Uh, I just have to go by... Light. Wow, tricky. Um, so the idea is that you can, I don't, you can define a scope on identifiers so that you can um, basically de define what you want people to take dependencies on. The typical use case is you have a component group and a whole bunch of components, or you have like three component groups and a whole bunch of components, and then some internal component groups. And your intent is that the Wix lib that is shared across many developers should only have, you know, three component groups published, you know, that are the, the entry points into the Wix lib. But due to the Wix toolset not having any scoping mechanism, um, identifier access, basically, you could go and refer, reach into that Wix lib and grab a random component, even though that's not the intent of the whole, you know, the intent of the library writer. Um, and so this feature would allow you to add um, this, and you know the syntax we could talk about, should talk about. But if you look here, I can't highlight because I can't see the mouse. Uh, uh, if you look up here above one, two, three, four, you see the thing called protected or whatever on the ID, so that um, you could say this component cannot be accessed outside of various scopes, and there's a few scopes that are just fine of the Wix lib to the, the file and things like that. So it's kind of like being able to create static functions inside a C file, so you can only see the public files and those kind of things. So that's what this feature is about. It essentially allows you to scope stuff. Um, and Jacob, you bring up good discussions of different ways that we could represent protected and all that kind of stuff. Um, so we should have that discussion and get it in the whip. The thing I want to cover here is whether this seems like a reasonable feature to add to the Wix tool set. I know I've wished I had it a few times. Well, it reminds me of the uh, bug slash feature request we went through, I don't know, one of, one of the four or five year old ones about having some, some mechanism to determine what's in a library. And really it was, yep. well, we, we need either documentation or IntelliSense to say, oh, well, now this thing is in scope. Yep. I'm realizing that this is a perfect match. Yep. Uh, because right now, all of the, you know, the component and custom action and directory IDs and so forth would be public and therefore, you know, in any kind of IntelliSense scenario, they're going to be visible, even right. though they're not very useful. Because really what you want is to be able to say, here's a component group 
or here's a, um, you know, whatever. Yeah, uh, like John brings up like file IDs being invisible because you don't need to see those. Right. Except sometimes you do, and it'd be really cool to have those things that are interesting. That's true. Like, you know, the na the ID of an exe that you might want, or, you know, whatever. You, you want to create a shortcut, too. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Or whatever. Yeah. yeah, there you go, web configs. Yes, but um, you want to be able to have other people edit, sure, yep. or whatever. So, so that's the intent of this this feature. So I, we're getting people, like, people are now starting to come up with the different ways of using it, which means I think it's probably a, a reasonable idea. Right. Right. Uh, could you go back to the list of, of scopes? And and these names, so the thing now is like, the idea is like, now from here, it's kind of the back and forth of the discussion about like, Jacob's bringing up different ways of representing this data. One of the big questions I have is, are these the right kind of names to be using and things like that? But we can go back and forth and discuss the Well, I like them because they're kind of familiar. Yeah, but uh, then you have to know what they are, so. Yes. Yeah, so Jake's asking, you know, expected that protected IDs would be allowed, um, and there's actually a, a consideration down here about that. So uh, you should read the whip, Jacob, and then I'm going to love your <laughs> uh, your comments are fantastic. We should get them all captured into the whip. Um, we can have that on Wix devs, and, and then I'll get them back and all that kind of good stuff. So yes, this is. So I think we should take this feature because people are kind of interested in it. And discussion about whether those identifiers are the right ones are interesting or not. That works. I agree. Um, there's also the question of can this be implemented. So this is a whip that I wrote without <laughs> knowing exactly how to implement it. So that always means that this design could end up being modified as you go in and go, oh, yeah, there's absolutely no way of doing X. But I think it's all doable. Yeah. Cool. All right. So with that ending on a high note, I think we will call... Uh, this meeting, online meeting number 14 on 2014. Gosh, 2014, that's so weird. Uh, January 9th, I think we're done. Uh, you guys have a wonderful day or evening or morning, wherever you're going to finish up. And uh, we'll talk to you next Thursday. Later. Bye.